So, harakiri means stomach cutting, and seppuku means cutting stomach. Nasa, konnichiwa, and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Harakiri, the special way the samurais committed suicide. Although many people around the world know about this word, why did they do it? Why was it the stomach they cut? And what is the difference between harakiri and seppuku? Today, as a Japanese man training with katanas and studying about samurais, I will answer these questions. By watching this video, you will be able to deepen your understandings towards samurai culture. Stick around to the end to find out how the samurais committed seppuku with a fan. First, I will talk about how harakiri and seppuku are different. Long story short, they are the same. Thanks for watching! But that wouldn't be fun or education at all. So these are three small differences that I found. Number one, written differently in Japanese. Number two, where it's used. Number three, how it's performed. Number one, written differently in Japanese. Harakiri is written like this in Japanese. Seppuku, on the other hand, is written like this. Kiru means to cut, and hara means stomach. So harakiri means stomach cutting, and seppuku means cutting stomach. By the way, there's another way of saying it called kappuku, which means split stomach. Yikes. Number two, where it's used. While it is broadly known as harakiri around the world, in Japan, we usually say seppuku. It seems that when foreign diplomats learned about this culture in Japan, they understood it as stomach cutting, which is harakiri, as I explained earlier. <coughs> Number three, how it's performed. Some say that harakiri was an informal style of suicide, of cutting your stomach on the battlefield, and seppuku was a ritual way of suicide. So harakiri is a solo flight suicide, but seppuku will have a second person that will cut your head off to relieve you from the pain. However, this is just a sensory story and is not clearly defined. So it's just like how samurai and bushi, ninja and shinobi, Luffy and Stray Hat are almost the same. Now that you understand how harakiri and seppuku are different, let's next talk about what they are in the first place. While there are some records of men cutting their stomach to commit suicide in the Heian era, it began to be thought as a noble way to die among the samurais in the Civil War era, about 500 years ago. The samurai that first conquered whole Japan in the Civil War era, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, evolved the culture of harakiri. He is one of the most famous people in Japanese history, kind of like George Washington, the first president of the United States of America. When Toyotomi Hideyoshi invaded Takamatsu Castle in Okayama Prefecture, Hideyoshi said that if the lord of the castle killed himself, he would have mercy on the lives of the other soldiers. The lord, Shimizu Muneharu, manfully cut his stomach. In other words, committed harakiri. Hideyoshi was impressed with his bravery, and this shifted harakiri to a way to take responsibility from mere suicide. Eventually, the reasons and motives to commit harakiri diversified. For example, one, oibara, Committing harakiri after one's lord has done so. Oi means to follow. 2. Tsumebara. Committing harakiri to take job responsibilities and in-laws. 3. Sashibara. Naming someone you grudge and committing suicide so that person will have to commit harakiri too in order to protect his honor. Sashi means to point at something. 
These are just some of the few examples for samurais to commit harakiri. But in any way, you can understand that it wasn't a simple suicide, but more of a last declaration of intention. Once the Civil War era ended and the Edo period began, harakiri became a kind of death penalty. It became somewhat like a ceremony, with everything from how you spend your few days before harakiri, what clothes you wear, and how you cut your stomach. The harakiri of samurai in the Edo period now had the meaning of protecting the monarch. It was loyalty towards the clan and family name, in order not to put dirt on them. Even if something goes wrong inside the clan, if someone commits harakiri, it will end as if things were settled without accountability. It can be said that the vassals were sacrificed to protect the lord. However, even samurais were not always ordered to perform haraki. If they were regarded as a disgraceful crime, the penalty would be to get your head cut off, which was thought as a very dishonorable way to die. Therefore, in Japanese, we say people were given the honor to commit harakiri, not ordered to commit harakiri. Even after Japan westernized and there were no more samurais in the Meiji era, the tradition of harakiri continued. A man who died of harakiri in 1872 was the last case of harakiri in the history of Japan's legal system. Harakiri as a method of executing was abolished in 1873, and since then, hanging has been used in the death penalty in Japan. However, examples of using harakiri as a method of suicide have been seen among military personnel even after the Meiji era. The idea of making harakiri an honorable self-determination remained. Now you understand the history of harakiri, you still might be thinking, why was it the stomach you cut though? The most commonly believed theory is written in the famous book, Bushido. According to the writer Nitobe Inazo, ancient autonomy believed that the abdomen contains the human soul and affection. Therefore, committing harakiri with bravery was considered an appropriate way to die by living up to one's Bushido. So harakiri was meant to show sincerity and innocence by cutting your stomach where your soul lays. Next, I will talk about how the harakiri proceeded. During the Civil War era and the beginning of the Edo period, there was not one concrete way of committing harakiri. However, in the mid-Edo period, once harakiri was established as a punishment for samurais, it became a complex and sophisticated ritual ceremony. First, the person who is sentenced to harakiri will take a bath to cleanse themselves, with the procedure of how a dead body will be bathed before a funeral. Next, they will wear a white kimono with the right side of the clothes in front, just like how a dead body will wear its shroud. Before the person is given his katana to cut his stomach, his last meal will be served. This is a very simple meal with rice, miso, vegetable pickles, etc. and also drink some sake. These are all meant to purify the body. After the meal, the katana used to commit harakiri will be placed in front of that person. After stating his name and with one bow, he will take the katana with a proper procedure and first stab his left stomach and drag the sword to the right. At this point, the kaishaku, which means the helper, will cut his head off to relieve him from his pain. Lastly, the inspector will confirm his death, and the harakiri ceremony will come to an end. If I explain everything, the information will be enormous so I will omit it. But in fact, the size and the direction of the room where the harakiri is performed and the behavior of the kaishaku helper side are all decided in detail. However, by the end of the Edo period, harakiri was formalized. So some samurais who were too scared or didn't know how to commit harakiri 
would place a fan instead of a katana in front of the samurai. And when the samurai places his hand on the fan, the helper will cut his head. Some samurais weren't all as brave as you may imagine. Then lastly, today's conclusion. Harakiri and seppuku are almost the same, with just three small differences. How it's written in Japanese, where it's used, and how and where the stomach cutting is done. Harakiri first became an honorable way to die in the Civil War era by Toyotomi Hideyoshi. He was impressed by the enemy's leader that manfully took his own life to save the others. In the Edo period that followed, Harakiri became a complex and sophisticated ritual ceremony for the samurais to use their lives to take responsibilities and to protect their clan's name. Harakiri was abolished in 1873, but the traditions continued even after the westernization of Japan in the Meiji era. In the formal way of committing harakiri in the Edo period, the person who will commit suicide will wash their bodies and wear white kimonos, just as how they do to dead bodies at a funeral. The samurai will eat their last meal and drink sake to purify his body, and with the short katana, will cut his stomach from left to right. The kaishaku helper will cut his head off to relieve him from the pain. However, by the end of the Edo period, harakiri was formalized, and samurais who were too scared to cut their stomach were given a fan instead of a katana to simply get their head cut off. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards samurai culture, please hit the like button and share this video to your friends and family. And my goal is to achieve 10,000 subscribers by July 2021, so your help would mean a lot. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. どうもありがとうございました。Everyone, once again, thank you very much for watching my video. After taking this video and editing it, I, uh, I've thought that maybe some of you may wonder, you know, at the end I introduced that some samurais committed harakiri with a fan, right? But I thought maybe some of you might think, why was it a fan though? I mean, it could have been something else. Um, there are some historical records where they said they would put wooden swords there too, but what's up with the fan, right? Um, so from what I've studied so far, um, the fans, the Japanese fans have um, came from China as well, along with all the other cultures too. And in China, the fan was originally an item for to give orders to your army. So the, le the, the leaders of, for example, like warriors and soldiers would use those fans to give orders. So that came into Japan and that kind of culture of the fan being an item for the warriors and soldiers still existed in Japan too. So for the samurais, the fan actually represented the katana, the sword. So it's funny how uh, in a lot of Japanese traditional culture, like tea ceremonies or no theater, those two I train in, um, Japanese dancing, kabuki, they all use fans too actually, because they are a really important item for the samurais. And in these traditional culture, like tea ceremonies, no theater, you never actually open it up to like wave yourself because it's not an item for cooling you down. It's something that represents the sword. And I wanted to introduce the real fans that I actually use. This is the fan that I use in the no theater. Really, actually pretty big, as you can see. The size is actually pretty big compared to my hand there. And this one over here is the one that I use for tea ceremonies. So the size is very different, a lot smaller. In tea ceremonies, these fans are used for uh, greeting people. They're used for proper greetings and the fan in the no theater. If you're a singer, you would sing holding on to this fan as if you're a samurai holding on to a katana. And if you're the main actor, like if you dance in no theater, you can you will use it. You can open it up and use it and represent wind and you know, snow and all, water and all those things too as part of the dance. Okay, so once again, thank you very much for watching. And if you had any other questions, while watching this video, please ask me in the comments below. So, では、ありがとうございました。